the sophisticates, i.e. the leaders, the intellectual establishment in these countries, as well as political leaders, want essentially embraced a model of economic development which had been given to them from the West. Okay. It had the idea was there was capital, that which means machines, roads, the modern type of capital, roads, buildings, machines, instruments, ports, and so forth, automobiles, and so forth, and labor, education, health. These two types of capital assets produce output, and these poor countries, leaders in these poor countries said, look where America is, look where Europe is, they're far ahead, look where Japan is, and they have embraced modernization, we need to modernize. Modernization here meant, how do we accumulate physical capital? Okay, take whatever you can from Earth, transform it into roads, ships, imports of goods and services, and so forth, okay, factories, and so forth. That was the mental model, backed by economic models, estimates of productivities of different types of capital assets, rates of return, and so forth. Now, people, <laughs> you're in uh, Latin America, so you will understand when I say this decolonization attitude was really perverse because basically it was a new form of colonialism amongst people, the intellectuals of the third world, because they were essentially borrowing a mental equipment that's been done abroad in amongst the colonies and then saying, no, we are revolutionaries. Okay. Which meant, of course, that the, the very idea of using indigenous knowledge is they're backward. They're ignorant. They're illiterate. So what the hell is, are they going to tell us? Science will do it. Okay. Now you look at the way my review is written. I talk about nature and investment in nature. And what does investment mean for natural capital, that is nature, the biosphere? You have a degraded wetland, let us say, because you've tarnished it, you've dumped a, a rubbish into it, or you have drawn car, you know, roads in it and reduced its water flow. And the, the wetland is becoming less and less productive in doing all the things that it does for us, for the neighborhood, which is having a habitat for pollinators, uh, cleaning water, all the microorganisms in the soil, which clean up water and so forth, okay? You, you want to regenerate it. You suddenly said, ah, I've read the Dasgupta review, and I said, of course, this wetland is a capital asset, and we ought to be investing in it to see whether it's the rate of return on investing in the, in the wetland is as high as it is uh, as the rate of return in building a road work, okay, extending the road work. Now, what does investment mean in nature? It doesn't mean plowing or, or you know, building, you know, pulling cement in as you do in construction of a road. It means leave it alone, move away from it, protect it, and wait for it to regenerate. Now you can do some science to help it, that's for sure. And good agronomists, good ecologists are forever in all parts of the world, if they're allowed to, help to regenerate natural capital. But it's very passive, and the investment is very passive, not active, if you see what I mean, all right? Now, when you do that, when you're trying to revive a wetland, or even more important, in the middle of a rainforest, who will know how productive the rainforest is? Which plants grow at which time of the season, for example? It'll be in the indigenous population. They're not scientists, but they have lived all, you know, generations there. So any good, sophisticated, modern man will say, yes, they have a knowledge base for a certain type of investment which we have ignored. So let's make use of them, that knowledge. So I don't see any problem here, really. It's bigotedness on our part, you know, the people who are making decisions. They should be allies. We should welcome indigenous knowledge because they're directed at a particular type of investment which we have ignored. We have been disinvesting all these years. And so if you want to invest in it, we need to use their knowledge. So for example, just as you would invite engineers when you build a building 
or extend the road system. You get surveyors, you get engineers, and so forth, right? As advisors, they will tell you how to do it, how much it will cost, and so forth. Likewise, if you want to regenerate a uh, part of the rainforest, which is where indigenous people live, or wherever, or a grassland, get them there, they're engineers. Thank you.